بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم انگلس لیکچر آئی ویل ایکسپلین دا انسٹرومنٹیشن آف نیوکلیئر مگنیٹک ریزوننس سپیکٹروسکوپی فرسٹ دیر آر ٹو ٹائپس آف سپیکٹرو فوٹو میٹر وچ آر کاملی یوزڈ ان این ایم آر سپیکٹروسکوپی فرسٹ ون از کال کنٹینیوس ویو این ایم آر In continuous wave, we kept the frequency constant and strength of the magnetic field is gradually varied. So, there are two factors. One is frequency of the magnetic field and other is frequency. So, magnetic field is varied and frequency is kept constant in continuous wave spectrophotometer. In continuous wave, the spectrum is recorded directly as absorption versus frequency. So, it provides us absorption spectra. It requires several minutes to complete to give us a spectrum. Here, we measure the radiant energy which is absorbed by the proton or the sample. The continuous wave mode is implied in early instrument. While the second one is Fourier transform NMR. In Fourier F transform NMR, we kept magnetic field constant and frequency is varied in a short duration of pulses, which effectively cover the whole frequency range to be studied. In Fourier transform, we will get emission spectra, while in continuous wave, we have obtained absorption spectra. Here, we measure the energy emitted by relaxing nuclei, mean when we convert from higher state to lower state and they emit energy, that energy will be measured in Fourier transform NMR. Fourier transform has superseded then the continuous wave because we measure the whole range in FTR. But here I will explain continuous wave mode which is easier for understanding and it is used in early mode of instrumentation. These are the parts which are the component of continuous wave NMR. First one is powerful magnet, second field speed generator, then sample tube, radio frequency transmitter and receiver, amplifier, recorder and then integrator. First, powerful magnet. The magnet is the most important part of the NMR spectroscopy because Magnet will resonate all the components present in the form of proton or in the form of carbon. So, the powerful magnet which are used, permanent electromagnet and the last one is superconducting magnet. The first magnet which is used is permanent magnet. Permanent magnet basically made of ferromagnetic material like iron. And it has shape like this one which I shown in diagram, circular in shape and we, here we place the sample in permanent magnet. It is cheapest, easy to use, temperature can be controlled but it lacks flexibility. In early instrument permanent magnet are used. Second one is electromagnet. In electromagnet, field strength can be varied by changing the current passing through the coil of the magnet. Here, we have applied a current through a battery and here is the coil and there is the sample which we have placed inside this coil. It is relatively intensive to temperature change and it runs on electricity. Third, is the superconducting magnet and the magnet is mostly used in all type of no NMR spectrometer. 
इट इज मेड ऑफ कॉयल ऑफ सुपर कंडक्टिंग वायर विच आर शोन इन डायग्राम दीज आर सुपर कंडक्टिंग कॉयल कैन बी यूज टू अचीव अ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड दैट इज मच ग्रेटर देन अदर टाइप इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेट एंड टोटल मैग्नेट इट कैन प्रोवाइड हायर रेजोल्यूशन आल एन एम आर स्पेक्टोमीटर दैट इज अब हंड्रेड मेगा हर्ज और बेस्ड ऑन हीलियम कूल्ड सुपर कंडक्टिंग मैग्नेट इट इज वेरी स्टेबल एंड रेलिटिवली कंपैक्ट इन नेचर तो दीज आर थ्री टाइप परमानेंट मैग्नेट इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेट एंड सुपर कंडक्टिंग मैग्नेट आर यूज इन एन एम आर second part is the field sweep generator because we have two mode we can move field strength or frequency the applied magnetic field here can be varied over a limited range by means of coils which are usually wrapped around or placed between the pole of the magnet which will show in the diagram at the later stage so by varying the current passing through these coil magnetic field can be swept sample tube in nmr spectroscopy mostly we will use solution form of the sample or liquid sample so for the preparation of sample we have used that solvent which are proton free or neutrated proton isotopes of proton normally it is 15 cm long and 5 mm in diameter this is the diagram of the sample tube which we are placed in the magnetic field it is made of borosilicate glass placed between the pole facing of the magnet it is spun about its vertical axis at the rate of 30 hertz per second and this is the diagram sample tube then sample holder sample gauge and the sample of the solution should be filled in the region 5 cm high from the bottom so it will undergo the magnetic field then radio frequency transmitter and radio frequency receiver it provide radiation of control frequency through a coil wrap around the sample tube the radiation are applied to the sample in direction perpendicular to the magnetic field and similarly radio frequency receiver the radiation from the transmitter is absorbed here in radio frequency transmitter we provide the frequency and here we receive the frequency from the sample detected in radio frequency receiver which is connected to another coil wrap around the sample tube so these are both around the sample in the form of perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the magnetic field amplifier just the signal we receive from the radio frequency is are in less quantity so amplifier just enhance that signal and after that recorder which give us the signal and drive x axis of the recorder to produce nmr spectrum and after that we will get the spectrum and integrator will give us automatic electronic integrator it will be in our spectrophotometer this measure the area under the peak or the signal this is the diagram of nmr spectrophotometer here this is the main diagram of nmr spectrophotometer the circular shape shows the superconducting magnet and here this red color shows the sample which we place inside the magnet here nmr console which are used for the operating procedure and after that we will get nmr spectrum in any form of workstation or recorder the internal part shown here we have placed a sample tube inside this strong magnetic field this is internal systematic diagram of nmr spectro photometer here this is the radio frequency input first we have to provide frequency from this one 
and this is the powerful magnet which is mostly the used super conducting magnet north pole and this is the south pole and both these coil which are radio frequency input and output perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the magnet this is the sample which we have placed and the sample r we have mixed with the solvent usually cdcl3 that is weighted chlorophan now we have replaced the proton with the other isotope deuterium which is not detected in nmr so it will check the difference between radio frequency input and radio frequency output and after that we will get a resonance in the molecule and that change will be recorded in the form of a nmr spectrometer and we will get different type of spectra in the at the end and then we have interpretation of the spectra thank you very much